so up to here we have seen that how we can define the matlab function so in addition to the built in function we can also define our own function and for that actually we need to create the script file and by the name of the functions now we have some uh, other function which is anonymous function in anonymous function we don't require to give the name actually and the anonymous function is used when you don't want to create the script file just like we have created the script file for every functions you are going to define in case of anonymous function you don't require to create the script file you can run you can create the anonymous function within the script your program script and generally anonymous function are very matlab small one you can define in only one line and this is useful when you are supposed to use the same expression again and again or the expression if you are using the expression where you have to take care about the symbols say operators or period sign dot operators like the things so get for getting rid from the mistakes if you type again and again you can instead instead of typing again and again you can create the anonymous function and once you create the anonymous function whenever you want to evaluate the function you can access you can call within the script file itself so for creating the anonymous function <coughs> we have the syntax like this here and this f handle means this is the function handle you can give any simple name this handle handle of function means it keeps the information related to this function and you can access this function with the help of this handle so handle keeps all the necessary information to access the function and here this is the at the rate and you are not giving the name of the function that's why it is known as anonymous function so for creating the anonymous function you just use the symbol at the rate okay. at the rate you can use and then whatever the argument list you have you can supply the input to the function and here you will have the expression you have the simple expression so argument list is a comma separated list of the input arguments just like we have done in function input and expression is any single valid matlab expression so this is any single this is important so you are creating the anonymous function for a single expression actually and we need to create this kind of anonymous function so that again and again you can use the same expression and you don't require to retype again and again and if you retype there may be the chance of mistake and that's why some complicated expression you can define the anonymous function so this is very simple syntax just like you can give the name of, of the handle so your handle name can be anything so this is you can simplest you can give the simplest name then at the rate then in the bracket you have to write the argument list and you can separate the argument list by the comma and here you can have the expression any varied matlab expression okay and for for the getting the clarity you can also enclose this expression within the parenthesis so you will come to know that okay this is the expression like this <coughs> we want to create a function anonymous function that is going to create the square means it is uh, obtaining the square of the input value so just like square if you have the two it means it the output of this is four so you are getting going to give the, uh, perform the squaring so that's why if you this is the handle name you can give any sq is given for the simplicity that you are going to compute the square of some numbers so that's why sq is written you can give any other name also so sq is equal to add the rate and since you are going to use only one variable means you have the only one argument x and this is the expression this is the valid expression and you can also enclose within the parenthesis there is no issue so now see you have you may have question that whenever you are going to make the square of this number then why you have put the 
dot operator and you can remember that what what is the importance of this dot operator this is the array multiplication means element by element multiplication so x can be a single number or it can be the matrix if x is the matrix okay say it may it may be the matrix like 2 4 6 this may be the x may be equal to this this is the vector and if you if you are going to perform the square and without dot then you will have the here and wh what we mean actually whatever be the list you are going to perform the square you are computing the square of every number so output should be 4 then 4 4 square 16 and then 36 you can give this is the output so if you don't put the dot operator it means you are going to square means this into same vector you are going to multiply again and this is inconsistent with the multiplication and also our meaning is to for compute the square of every number so that's why here dot operator is important so whenever you want to compute some square of some number or of a list of if you have the list of number you want to compute the square of every number of the list then you can use this anonymous function this is very so you can also include within the parenthesis there is no issue how you can execute the anonymous function so for executing the anonymous function this is the handle of the function so you have to use the handle of the function and this is not the name of the function this is the handle of the function so with the help of this handle you can execute this so you have the same syntax as cube just like we have used for the function and here you have the single list single argument and this is one vector actually and the matrix is 1 by 2 so you have the single argument and once you pass this then you are going to evaluate this expression and x here is the important of dot you can see so 5 square and 7 square you are going to make with the help of this dot so see this is very important and within the matlab script you can define just like the command within the script you can define or in the command window also you can define like this and later you can use so once you are creating the script file just like the you are writing the command you can write the command to create the function like this and every time you want to make the square of some number you can use this handle and this is the importance of anonymous function okay so here this description simply says that if you want to compute the square of 5 and 7 then what you need instead of if you have not created the anonymous function then you need to write the expression like this 5 7 then dot exponent 2 then 5 square and 7 square so it says that okay once you type this and once you type this you need more key strokes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 like this and here you take less 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 you can also count the comma so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 you have you require 8 and here you may have the 9 so it says that uh, it simply says that if you if you type this if you want to compute the square of 5 and 7 then you have to write this okay in the script and in it, if you have not created the anonymous function then you just write, type this and so you are taking one key to less but see this is this is for the simple expression actually what if you have the some expression like sin is uh, sin is sin square x or some some complicated x square the x can be vector also so you have to take care about this and any complicated some complex expression you have and if you have if you have not created the anonymous function for this complex expression then you have to retype again and again and then you will make the mistake so this is not for only for computing the square of 5 and 7 you we are going to define the anonymous function for handling some complex expression also so creating the anonymous function is always useful because in this way uh, you will not make the mistake once you are going to once you require to retype the same expression
Now, <clears throat> once you have defined the anonymous function, then you can pass the handle of an anonymous function. So like this. So this is the handle poly1. This is the, you are creating the anonymous function. And handle is poly1 at, at the rate x. You have only one argument. And this is the expression. This is the expression you have. So see, this is the expression you have. 4 times x dot exponent 2 minus 50 times x plus 5. And see, if you are going to, this is the example, if you want to compute the minimum of the polynomial, to find the minimum of the polynomial 4x square minus 50x plus 5 over the interval minus 10 to 10. So you are, you are interested for finding the minimum value from the interval minus 10 to 10 of this polynomial. So for this polynomial, actually, we have com uh, constructed the, we have created the anonymous function. And we are giving the name poly1. And say you have only one argument x. That's why here you have only one argument x. And then this is the polynomial. x can be vector also. x can be scalar or x can be vector. If x is vector, then you must have the dot. So that's why if x is scalar, then there is no problem. If it is vector, then also you are going to take care of this. So 4x squared. So whatever 4 times x dot, that's why you are going to write minus 50 times x. And since this is the scalar and this, is, this may be with the vector, so you are going to multiply scalar with, your, if x is the vector and you are going to multiply with 50, then there is no problem. And you don't require to put the dot here because you are just multiplying the vector with the scalar. And this is just the scalar number. So this is. Now, <clears throat> this is this is the function, built-in function in the MATLAB. And this function is used for finding the minimum interval between minus 10 and 10. So see, you are interested to find the minimum value of this polynomial. And you have created the anonymous function for this. So just the handle of this function is poly1. So you are writing the poly1. If you are not writing the poly1, you have to write complete expression. So here, actually, you need to write this complete from here to here you need to write. So instead of writing this, you have created the anonymous function by this. And handle is poly1. You are passing the poly1. And poly1 is actually this is. So poly1 gives the information of this anonymous function. So you are going to say poly1. And then you have minus 10 and 10. This is. So the x value is, is minus 10. And x value is also 10. So between minus 10 to 10, you are going to compute the minimum value. And this, you are going to use this built-in function of the MATLAB. And you are getting the answer. So <clears throat> once you have created the function, for anonymous function, the handle can be passed. So you are going to pass the handle. So if you are not going to pass the handle, then you see that you need to write like this. You have to write like this, this complete, up to here. So this is important. Sometimes you may be required to find the minimum value again and again. And then you have to, instead of retyping this, you have to just to create the anonymous function. And whenever you are going to use, you can just, if you want to pass the handle, you can pass the handle of the anonymous function to any functions like this. Here actually, uh, till now we have seen that only one input. Now you can have more than one input also. Here you have the two input. You can have more input also. So you, <coughs> SQRT sum. So you are going to find the square root x square plus y square. This is the square root of x square plus y square. So you are going to define this. This is the expression. So how you call, how, this is the two values. You have the x and y. And x and y can be vector also. That's why you have to take care of this. So at the rate x and y, now you have the two arguments, x and y. And this is the expression you are writing, sqrt. And sqrt is, is the built-in function in the MATLAB. It is the purpose is to compute the square root. Now, for what? You are going to compute the square root. You are going to compute the square root of x square plus y square. And x can be vector. x can be okay scalar also. So that's why you have to, if, if x is vector, then dot is must. 
right? <clears throat> so that's why you are putting the dot. So x dot exponent two, y dot exponent two. So x square plus y square. You are computing the square root of x square plus y square. And if you wish, you can write within the parenthesis. There is no issue. Now, how you are going to execute the function? By the handle name. This is the name of the handle. And just type the name of the handle. And first one is corresponds to the x, and second one is corresponds to the y. So there are two arguments, two input, three and four. The order is important. Like other functions, you have three for the x and four for the y. And once you are giving this value, and what what will be the answer? Answer is five. Three square and four square. Nine plus sixteen and twenty-five. Square root of twenty-five is twenty-five. So square root of twenty-five is five. So you are getting the answer. So <clears throat> you have created the function having the more than one argument, and you have just you have executed also. Whenever you need, you can execute. Within the script file also, you can execute. You don't require to go into the command window. Now. Once you go for the, once you create the function handle, then you have the example for the plane. Consider this plane z is equal to a x plus b y. This says that whenever you have in the expression scalar values, then scalar value must be uh, must be assigned actually. So here a and b are the scalar value. So before going for the an anonymous function definition, you must give the value for the scalar quantity. So here the plane equation z is equal to a x plus b y, a x plus b y. So a and b are the scalar. So before going to the anonymous function, you have to give the value for a and b. This is so why it is so. it is important because you are just passing the argument and argument is what argument is x and y so you are if you execute then you are going to pass argument only x and y value and if you don't have the a and b value how it will be evaluated from here it will get the a, a value for the a and value for the b so that's why actually you must give the value for the scalar so now you are going to Define the anonymous function like the plane. You are naming the plane as the handle. This is the handle. At the rate x y, two inputs are there x and y. And now this is very simple. A x and b y. You don't require dot because a uh, a is the scalar, you know. And x can be vector. There is no problem. B is also the scalar and y can be the vector. So here dot operator is not required because one of one is vector and one can be vector and one is scalar always. So now, how you are going to find out the values? So if you say plane, you are going to call this function plane to eight, and two means x and y means a. So you are going to evaluate. So you can see that answers is you are getting the answer forty four. Okay, you are multiplying two with two and six, two times six, twelve, and then thirty two, and you are going to eight. and you are getting the answer the answer is if you not if you don't specify z is equal to then answer will be stored in the default variable a and s so here you have specified z so z is equal to 44 so what you have learned here actually whenever you have the uh, expression and in, if that expression has some variable which is the scalar one then before defining the anonymous function you have to give the value of variables i uh, means scalar values then you can define okay so <clears throat> we have seen that how you can define the anonymous function and how you can execute the anonymous function how you can pass the handle of the anonymous function to other function also and once you are having the in the expression if you have some scalar value scalar then you must assign the scalar quantity so before uh, going to compute the 
anonymous function you have to give the value for the scalar one now actually what you need to see anonymous function can call another to implement function compositions so actually it says that one anonymous function can call other anonymous function so see here we have the example 5 sin x cube 5 sin x cube you are interested to compute this 5 sin x cube so we are going to compute this for example and for computing this you can define directly you can define the anonymous function you don't just for the example how you can call the anonymous function we are going to decompose first you are going to compute the s cube then you are going to define in the five and the expression uh, anonymous function for computing the sin x and x now x will here you have the x instead of x you you need to compute the x cube so how it will be done see first we are going to compute you are going to define the anonymous function for computing the value of x cube so f is the anonymous function uh, sorry handle of the anonymous function at the rate x you have only one argument x and see x dot exponent 3 dot is required because x can be vector so if x is vector then it must be there and if x is scalar then dot is not required so for simplicity you can put dot here so once you call this anonymous function f it is going to compute x cube actually x cube now whenever you are going to define the anonymous function g whose handle is g so here again this is the function of x so at the rate x now this is the expression 5 into sin x okay so 5 into sin x this is the expression for this anonymous function 5 into sin x now our target is to execute 5 into sin x cube so you are going to create the another function which is the anonymous also and handle is h and you are going to define like this at the rate x this is the argument you need to pass this is the input you need to pass and here <coughs> this is the expression here here this is the expression and in this expression what you are going to do you are going to call the function so g is the one anonymous function you have defined f is also one anonymous function you have defined and you are calling actually so <coughs> you are first you are calling in the argument of this you are calling g and the argument you are going to give So the g is what f x. Once f x compute, then what is the result? And this is f is the anonymous function, handle of the anonymous function. And you are going to pass the value of x. Then this anonymous function, the result of this execution is what you have the x q value because f is defined like this. It is going to compute the x q. So once this completes, this execution is complete. Then you have the x q actually here. and <clears throat> means the value of the x cube whatever be the x you have computed the x cube so this is the value actually and this is the value for x and you are you have defined the g g is like this 5 into sin x and here x is equal to what actually x is equal to you are going to give the value x cube that's why actually you are going to compute x cube so here you are getting the value like if you have the if you are supplying x if x is equal to 2 if you give x is equal to 2 here like this so here f2 if you are, once you execute f2 then x is equal to 2 and you have the so you are having the what you have the 8 so you are going to give the anonymous function x value is 8 here where 8 is actually x cube like this and then 5 into sin 8 so once you have 5 into sin 8 and then sin 8 you have some value and then you are going to multiply with 5 and you are getting the answer this so the simple <clears throat> simple what we have learned that you can call the another anonymous function to implement so once you have defined you can call within the expression so here you have calls here you have called the anonymous function f and g so you can define the anonymous function and whenever you require you can execute whenever you require you can pass the handle whenever you require you can also call the anonymous function within the expression so 
Okay. For simple expression, actually, we have to go for the anonymous function. And later, if you want to use those, then such kind of expression, you can just call. 